Friends, in this video, I am going to talk about Spring Cloud API Gateway Rate Limiter. Okay, so in the last video, I have discussed about how this Spring Cloud API Gateway will work here. Okay, so an API Gateway is a server that acts as a entry point for like all the client requests to your microservices here. Okay, basically it will sit in between the clients and the services and that route the request and managing the traffic and handling the security and uh, providing like additional features like load balancing, caching, rate limiting and logging. Okay, so uh, this is how this API gateway will work. So now I'm going to talk about um, how this Spring Cloud API gateway will work as a rate limiter here. Okay, so let me open yeah one of the diagram so first of all like what is a rate limiting here okay so uh, i think most of the people heard about the rate limiting right so rate limiting helps to protect the services from being uh, overwhelmed by too many requests from a single user or a client okay so uh, now uh, we have like a couple of algorithms we have like token bucket algorithm and uh, apart from this we have a leak a leaky bucket algorithm okay so but one of the most uh, used famous algorithm is token bucket algorithm okay so this is the token bucket algorithm so the token bucket algorithm is one of the most popular and widely used rate limiting approaches uh, due to its simplicity and effectiveness okay so i will explain like how this token bucket algorithm will work so so let's imagine that uh, okay so this bucket holds like some of the tokens here okay so the bucket has maximum capacity of tokens so tokens are added to the bucket at the fixed rate let's say that we have a 10 buckets uh, sorry 10 tokens okay per second so when a request is arrived okay so it must obtain a token from the bucket to proceed right so if there are enough tokens in this bucket the request is allowed to and uh, tokens are removed here so let's say that uh, if the request has been received if there are enough tokens in this bucket okay so the request is allowed and tokens are removed here so process the request if the tokens are available in the bucket and remove the consumed tokens from the bucket here okay so if there are no enough tokens in the bucket okay the request is dropped here okay so this is how this uh, rate limiter token bucket uh, uh, rate limiter algorithm will work okay so now okay so this is my spring cloud api gateway okay so whenever you will hit like a api gateway endpoint so that has to be comes through the spring cloud api gateway to reach our product service here okay so uh, here apart from this um, spring cloud gateway i am going to use the redis here so this redis will store this metrics inside this redis cluster okay so this rate limiter matrix will be stored inside this redis so this is the uh, spring cloud api gateway rate limiter okay so let me open my code so uh, in the last video i have discussed about how this spring cloud api gateway will work so this is the spring cloud gateway routes configuration so we need to define like id and this is my service name product service and this is uri load balancer uri and apart from this we need to uh, provide like predicates so predicates inside this predicates you need to define the path of this service here okay so this is my path products okay and i just registered this service with eureka server okay that is the reason i have defined this eureka server url here okay so this is straightforward uh, nothing is complex and so i ran this uh, in my local so this is my eureka eureka is already started so so this eureka registered with these three services one is product service and spring cloud api gateway and another one is zipkin okay so you can ignore the zipkin for the time being so this is spring cloud api gateway right so let's open this and whenever this is my spring cloud gateway okay url now you need to define the product ca okay so when you hit this api gateway so it will route the request from api gateway to 
product service so here we can see like a um, couple of products here so this is working fine now so i need to work with uh, this spring cloud gateway rate limiter right so to work with this basically what we need to do is we need to add like couple of dependencies okay so let me open the palm.xml file so here uh, i need to add okay so this is a spring boot starter data redis reactive dependency we need to add this okay once you added this um, we need to add like some other like configurations okay so what i will do is i will go to this official page of this request rate limiter okay this is the request rate limiter okay so filter so here they have defined like all the possibilities configurations okay so uh, yeah so like this you can define the filters and name of the filter is request rate limiter and arguments is key resolver here okay so uh, here what is the key resolver here so i just want to summarize why we require the key resolver here okay key resolver is a mechanism that extract uh, this unique identifier so that is key from incoming request okay so without key resolver so the red limiter would not know so how to uniquely identify the clients and enforce the limits properly so basically uh, so the rate limiting mechanism needs to differentiate between clients to um, enforce the limits appropriately okay so for example so you might want to um, rate limit based on like client ip address user id api key custom criteria okay so client ip address basically limit the number of requests from each ip address okay so that is one thing another thing is like user id so limit the number of requests per authenticated user and apart from that api key so limit the number of requests for api key as well so so the key resolver is mechanism that extract the unique identifier from the incoming request okay so we require this key resolver so you can define the key resolver here okay and apart from this we need to define like this three arguments here okay so here we have like uh, a replenish rate and burst capacity okay and apart from this we have like requested tokens here okay so as i uh, mentioned earlier so the token is nothing but so these tokens are available in, the, in this bucket okay so uh, here replenish rate so what is the replenish rate here so replenish rate means this defines how tokens are added to the buckets per second so let's say that if you want to add like 10 uh, tokens for okay second so if, if you need to like add like 10 tokens are added to the bucket per second here okay and apart from this we have a burst capacity so what is the burst capacity this is defines the maximum number of tokens or like request the bucket can hold at any given time okay so this is allows for like handling like short burst of traffic so for example so if burst capacity is 20 here okay let's say that if burst capacity is 20 then the client can make the 20 request in a quick succession here okay so all uh, like all within the first second so if enough uh, let's say that if enough tokens are available okay so once the bucket is empty so the new tokens are only added to that okay replenish rate here or like 10 tokens per second in this case here okay and apart from this requested token so by default it is one so you can add like n number of tokens here okay so this parameter is used to define how many tokens a specific request will be consumed here okay so um, so for example if uh, redis rate request tokens is set to like uh, one so each request made by the client will be consumed one token from the bucket here so this would uh, this this would like effectively mean that the only one such request can be made if the burst capacity is one here okay so uh, so this is how we have to be defined so what you can do is you can just copy this configuration and go back to your application that ml file so here you can just define okay like this filters name is request rate limiter and arguments it's giving error so uh, it doesn't 
make sense so it is saying that not expected here so we can ignore it okay we will see if, if it is not working then we will check it out and apart from this uh, what we have to do is we have to add the key resolver here right so to work with key resolver so we need to add one bean here okay so this is uh, key resolver bean Oh, main application so here you can just add this key resolver okay so I just added this key resolver here so uh, we get like uh, exchange dot get request get remote address okay get host address so I'm just using the host address so this is a unique identifier right for our request so uh, you can add like any like IP address or like user ID API key okay so this is key, key resolver to identify like um, our request here okay now uh, apart from this configuration uh, yeah so we need to uh, add like uh, so redis as well right so what i can do is basically uh, in spring boot 3.1 actually we have a docker compose support so i will add that docker compose dependency here and i will go for like this redis i will download the redis from the docker here okay so uh, let's add like some dependency not here okay spring uh, boot docker compose okay so this is the dependency we required here we just refresh this and after that uh, what you need to do is you have to be add one of the docker compose file here okay let's add so docker compose dot ml file okay so inside this you need to add like a redis related information okay and just paste here okay so i will explain what is this so here actually we have like uh, two services one is like redis service this is our image and this is the container name so you can just restart always you can define the volumes okay to uh, avoid like um, suspension of the data okay and apart from this uh, redis is running on like 6379 you can map to the 6379 and apart from this we have a redis insight okay so this is redis inside to check it out like it's kind of like redis cli you can connect and we can see all the metrics related to the redis ca okay and this is redis inside image uh, version here and container name okay this will uh, run on like port 8001 okay i define the volume here okay so that's it it's straightforward so what you can do is uh, you can just restart this and test it out how it's working okay it started in the meantime what i will do is i will go to the container section here i will see whether the redis inside and redis is started or not okay both are started so uh, what i can do is uh, for the time being i will test whether this spring cloud api gateway is working or not first okay so let's hit this api okay it's working fine it's giving the response now uh, to test this rate limiter actually we need uh, some of the configuration right so what i will do is i will open this jmeter okay so this is our jmeter here so uh, you can define the number of threads here okay so what i will do is go to the application at ml file uh, i will take two four just restart this so the burst capacity is four so per second it has to be allowed only four requests okay let me start this and go back here and check here okay so four requests are success and fifth request is failed that is four to nine too many requests right so so this is how you can test it by using this uh, jmeter okay so in the first request you can see this um, rate limiting remaining is one here okay okay here we have a three zero and two okay so as we mentioned earlier in the uh, 
bucket algorithm right so if one is hit so that one has been removed from that bucket right so initially like let's say that we have a it will start from 0 to 0 to 3 so 3 is removed okay and 2 is removed and 1 is removed and 0 is removed now so now we will get it this too many requests okay that is 429 status here okay so this is how you can hit and you can see the response data as well so for the success we can see the response data for the failure you can see the response headers as well okay and uh, so this is how it will work apart from this um, we started the redis right redis insights also is there so what you can do is uh, one second so this is my port number okay so uh, what you have to do is i already added this database here so instead of that if you add like new redis database just click on this it will ask you to the host port number and name here so uh, my host is actually redis because we have defined as uh, yeah so this is my container name right so the this is my host so you need to define the redis okay after that port number okay 6379 and name so you can provide like any uh, redis local setup something like that so when you add redis database basically it will okay add it to your okay redis insight here so here you can see like all the summaries like uh, how much memory what are the total keys are there how many clients are connected all the information you can see here okay apart from this we have a cli as well so in the cli so you can just hit that okay some keys as well so you can see the keys okay and um, status info yeah so info state uh, so like this all the statistics you can see here okay so uh, so total connections are received total commands processed okay all those information you can see by using the CLA as well okay now what I will do is so let's in the meantime I will make it ready okay we need a J meter where is the J meter I don't see yeah so this is our J meter go back to our thread group okay so when the time hit it right so i will see the this rate limiter metrics and the keys here okay i just want to show you so let's hit this and when you hit this hit this see this we can see two keys one is request rate limiter and the one is request rate limiter tokens and timestamp so this is how so this metrics will store inside this redis okay so if you like this please go ahead and like this video so if you haven't subscribed my channel please go ahead and subscribe my youtube channel thanks thanks for watching